hunting with a drone in Texas at night is illegal. Hey guys, it's Daniel again with Brazos Valley Boars and Varmints. So, um, like I said in my last video, I got a drone. Now, I got my very first drone back about five years ago, and it was this weird Frankenstein build, and it was great all the way up until I let my brother drive it straight into a tree. Um, but honestly, the thermal wasn't that good of quality. It was five years ago. Um, it just, it, it wasn't quite there compared to what we have now um, and so I don't really miss it that much it, it, it wasn't that good but now I have the DJI Enterprise Matrice 30T and guys this thing is amazing I love it it is great for all the stuff that it can do nighttime daytime and the extra features but look i'm not here to talk about that drone what i'm here to talk about is actually the laws based around using drones for the purposes of hunting and the things that go around hunting here in texas so what i noticed was a while back there were two different people that were well known in the texas hog hunting community that both put their drones up for sale on Facebook, and I noticed on the exact same day. And I was like, hey man, these are high quality drones. They're the best that were out at the time. So I called somebody that I knew that was a drone dealer. I was like, hey, give me the down low. What's going on? Is something fixing a drop that's gonna be a big deal? And like, they're just selling to get rid of it to make money for this new thing. Like, what's going on, right? And he goes, no, that ain't nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, that's weird. I don't, I don't know what to think. So sat it out for a little while. And then one of them came forward and explained that he'd actually gotten a visit from some game wardens and was issued some tickets based around his activity with using a thermal drone at night. And I reached out to every single game warden that I had a telephone number for, which is only in the counties that I hunt in. And I don't have all of them, but right, I reached out to a few of them. And everybody was like, yeah, that's legal. That's no problem at all, except for one. And that was Officer Adams in Robertson County. And this guy was great because he did that thing where he said, I'm going to find out about that and get back with you. But like most people, they don't get back with you. This guy did. And he got back with me with facts. And it was great because I played the card of, I don't know what to do. What's going on? And I knew way more than I was letting on. But this guy had all the right data, and more than that, knew where to point me to get more questions asked. And there was three basic areas that he had to point me to figure out why this was a punishable offense here in Texas. And those three areas were the Texas Administrative Code, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Code, and the Federal Airborne Hunting Act. I got to dive into this in all three of them just to explain what's going on. I could jump to the end, but some of these are really going to matter later. First, let me knock out the Texas Parks and Wildlife Code just because that one's going to be really simple. Because really what it's getting at is that in Texas, we are defining drones as aircraft. Sounds good. Move on. The next one I want to get to is the Federal Airborne Hunting Act. And with that one, let's walk through this together. It is saying in 19.1, the purpose of the regulation is contained in this part to provide rules relative to the prohibition against shooting or harassing of wildlife from any aircraft, providing the requirements for the contents and filling out annual reports by the states regarding permits issued for the such shooting or harassing and following regulations necessary for the effective enforcement of blah, blah, blah. Now, the great thing I love about all laws is that they usually have somewhere that they talk about exceptions. Let's go to 19.2. It says that exceptions to the general prohibitions would be that the prohibitions of the preceding section shall not apply to any person who, number two, is acting within the limitations of a permit referred to in 19.21, which actually talks a lot about birds. Um, in fact, most of these hyperlinks talk about birds, but 19.31 of this part, and that's where we come into play as far as having a federal exception if we have a state permit to be able to do this. 
Um, it says that states may issue permits to persons to engage in airborne hunting or harassing of wildlife for purposes of administering or protecting land, water, wildlife, livestock, domestic animals, human life, or crops. States may not issue permits for the purpose of sport hunting. So this is gonna have to be for eradication purposes. This is gonna have to be for protecting our land, etc. The Federal Airborne Hunting Act is sometimes known as the Shooting from the Aircraft Act, but at the same time, aircraft is also a drone and it's that's a different federal law. You cannot attach a gun to a drone, so just kind of skip that part. So we've got that Texas Parks and Wildlife says drone is an aircraft. Federal Airborne Hunting Act says you can't do any of this stuff unless you have a permit issued by the state. Let's go to the Texas Admin Code. This is where we really kind of start digging deep into what Texas law is, and this is what really gets us. So the Texas Admin Code is a compilation of all state agency rules in Texas. And each title under the Texas Admin Code represents a subject category and related agencies are assigned to those appropriate titles. So this is where the, te the Texas Department of Parks and Wildlife is able to create rules and regulations that are upheld as law that we have to obey. So let's dive in. Texas Admin Code Title 31 is what deals with natural resources and conservation. Part 2 is the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Chapter 65 deals with wildlife. Subchapter F has the permits for uh, aerial management of wildlife and exotic species. Rule 65.152 is a lot of things here. But the big things that are going to affect us is going to be line D, where it says a person, which includes a pilot, applicant, gunner, observer, or sub-agent, commits an offense if, sub-line 7, a person acting as a gunner or pilot takes or attempts to take wildlife or exotic animals during the hours between half an hour after sunset and half an hour before sunrise. So basically standard game hunting hours. But Daniel, hang on a second, that's game hunting hours. Game hunting hours are what applies to game animals. True, but when trying to get a permit to use aircraft, a drone, to hunt, this is talking about takes or attempts to take wildlife or exotic animals. Wild pigs in Texas are considered an exotic animal, and this clearly states between half an hour after sunset and half an hour before sunrise. That's an offense. So you cannot use a drone to hunt exotic animals between half an hour after sunset or half an hour before sunrise. So nighttime. Well, so hang on a second. Daniel, what about take or attempt to take? Now, this is where a lot of people start to try to finagle away where from a certain point of view, take may or may not mean actually killing or hunting because I'm not doing any of that from the drone. I'm just using it as an observation tool. Really, it's somebody else that is doing all that. But remember that the Federal Airborne Hunting Act specifically said in 19.11 General Prohibitions, line B, sublines 1 and 2, the acts prohibited in this section include but are not limited to any person who pilots or assists in the operation of an aircraft from which another person shoots or shoots at wildlife while airborne or while on the ground takes or attempts to take any wildlife by means, aid, or use of an aircraft. So you can't really wheeze a lot of that one. Believe me, that's what I first thought also. I was like, man, let's, let's just, well, from a certain way of viewing the world, no, not happening. So, Daniel, you did all of this basically just to tell me, using a drone at night to hunt hogs in Texas is illegal. Yeah, I did. Um, 
And it's not just me, it's game wardens who are showing up to people's houses who've been doing this and issuing them tickets. There have been threats of worse punishment, but hey, we'll just give you these couple of tickets because it's your first offense doing this. But yeah, it's real. Well, well dang, Daniel, what, what the heck are we going to do about it? All right, let me tell you what I have been doing about it. I reached out to the Texas Administrative Code because that's where this law is. That's where this um, not during non-hunting hours rule is. So I reached out to the Texas Admin Code and I quickly got a response from a lady who is the editor of the Texas Register at the Office of the Secretary of State. And she replied, those submissions usually happen because of bills passed in the Texas legislature and slash or because of rule reviews. Well, I don't know what a rule review is, but I know what the Texas legislature is. So I reached out to every single one of my legislators here in the state of Texas. And I, when I say every single one, I don't just mean the ones for the county that I live in. I mean the ones for the counties that I even hunt in. I made a list of all of them in both the House of Representatives and the Senate and emailed every single one of them. I got a few typical responses. Some of them were, you don't vote in my county, so um, good luck. I'll either ignore you or I will send this on to the people who you do, who whose county you do vote in, um, or I got, you know, hey, this guy's not even running for office, so forget about it. <laughs> that one was funny. But the most helpful response that I got was from the office of Senator Charles Schretner. He's the guy that is in charge of District 5, which covers Brazos County, which is the county that I live in, also hunt in, and also Robertson and Grimes County, and I hunt in places in both of those counties as well. And Mr. Schretner had a guy respond back from his office who did some back and forth, did some digging for me, and he pointed me to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission. And he said, you need to reach out to those people because it's the commission who makes rule changes. Well, great. So what do I do from here? I, re I go on the commission website. There's no contact info for the commission. But it has a list of all of the commissioners. And most of the commissioners have contact info in the form of a fax. So I took the same letter that I wrote to all the legislators, rewrote it a little bit, and, and faxed it. Who has a fax machine nowadays? I faxed it over to every single one of them that had a fax number so I could get this over to them. A couple of weeks later, I got a letter typed out to me, and here it is. This is what it says. Dear Mr. Polonsky, thank you for your letter regarding aerial wildlife management permits and their use in managing the depredation issues related to feral hogs. As you alluded to in your letter, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department staff in both our wildlife and law enforcement divisions have submitted an item to be placed on the agenda for the August Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission meeting that includes a request to publish the proposed changes to the relevant section of the Texas Administrative Code that would address the very point you raise. Great! The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department staff have received numerous comments regarding this issue recently due to the surge in drone popularity as a method to aid in the control of feral hogs. When these regulations were initially adopted, the primary type of aircraft used by aerial wildlife permit holders for the control of feral hogs was helicopters. It is only in recent years that drones have become a more commonly used aircraft by aerial wildlife management permittees. Please know that the section of the Texas Administrative Code that was cited in your letter was not adopted to limit any landowner's ability to control the depredation issues caused by feral hogs. You can follow the agenda, blah, blah, blah. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department and the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission appreciate and value your feedback. Thank you again, Mr. Polonsky, for taking the time to personally reach out to share your concerns. Sincerely, Arch A. Beaver Alpin III, Chairman CC, Mr. Charter Smith, Mr. Clayton Wolf, Mr. John Silvowski, and Colonel Chad Jones. Now, this Arch H. Beaver Alpin guy is the chairman of the commission. All of these guys are basically judges, except for maybe one or two. And I was super excited. I'm, yay, this thing is going to get addressed. I've been a part of change here in the hog hunting community. Yeah, my little victory here. It's awesome. I'm su this is, this is going to be good. So I go on the website, since I know that the Texas 
the Parks and Wildlife Commission is going to be meeting in August. I look at the objectives, nowhere to be found. <sighs> okay, so maybe I don't know exactly how to read through all of the jargon of the entire commission objectives, but in the objectives, I didn't read anything that sounded like a proposed rule change for this issue. So I don't know what's going to happen after this meeting. I don't know. The meeting is on August 24th through the 26th. So actually in a couple of days. It's not that far away. I am filming this right before this meeting. So I hope that whenever I come back about this, we've got really good news to share and we can do what we need to do for the conservation plans of wild hogs in Texas, which is basically eradication. And we should be able to use all the tools that we need. Okay, I'm starting to go into the arguments of why we need this, but y'all understand that. What I really want to cover in this video is the legal aspects of it. Right now, guys, if you're using a drone to hunt hogs in Texas after 30 minutes after sunset or before 30 minutes before sunrise, so basically nighttime, that's illegal. I'm sorry, don't be mad at me. I didn't make up the law. I'm I'm the actually the only guy I've seen making a video about this actually being illegal. So there it is, guys. I'm gonna keep up with it. I wanna go out there and have fun. I wanna go out there and help landowners. I wanna go out there and hang out with my friends and do really cool things. It's great, it's fun, it's for everybody who loves this lifestyle. If you wanna use a drone, you should be able to do it. So guys, I'm sorry this one's kind of a bummer. I know this one's long, golly. But this is where we are. It's kind of illegal, but I'm going to stay on top of it. So guys, if you are thinking about getting a drone, or if you already have a drone, I hope that this helps you make an informed decision on exactly what it is that you're doing. I say all that, I bought one. I, I, I believe in it. I'm going to be a part of making this happen, of getting this rule changed. There's no way that I'm just going to sit back and let this sit the way it is. It's going to come through. The question is, what's it going to take? How long is it going to take? I'm going to be a part of it. I hope you're following along because this is going to happen. And I'm really glad that this is something that I can help give back to the community because I love everything about this. All right, guys. Love y'all. Take care. Be awesome. Be you. I'll be keeping up with y'all real soon. Bye.